Old Trailbrook. Verse 9 is a continuation as our third message on faithfulness. It still required folks. I will just entitle this faithful sayings number two. Faithful sayings number two. We taught on this or preached on 1 Timothy chapter number one. This is the faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus has come into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief, Paul said. He knew about being a law sinner, but now that he's saved and he has a young preacher boy by the name of Timothy, he's writing to a preacher here. And of course, uh, uh, for a bishop or for an elder or for a preacher, uh, all the same words there interchangeably, uh, faithfulness is required. We're to live blameless lives, holy lives unto the Lord, lest we slip, Scripture says, lest we in our everyday vernacular, we get a little too loosey-goosey. Amen? Uh, sometimes on, sometimes off, sometimes in the choir, sometimes not in the choir, sometimes read the Bible, sometimes not read the Bible, sometimes pray, sometimes not pray, and we just need more consistency. I see this need greater as your pastor more than any message that I can preach right now. And I know there's a lot of hindrances. I know there's a lot of things that are pulling on the lives of these uh, born-again Christians, no doubt they're Christians, uh, but yet they still need to be reminded, uh, as, as, uh, uh, as uh, Timothy or Paul told young Timothy, to stir up the gift which lieth in you, which means we need to constantly be made aware. He said, Peter said this, to, uh, to, that I come to stir up your pure minds uh, by way of remembrance. These things that we need to be uh, keep in mind and keep in, in constant uh, uh, up, upgrading in our life, uh, tuning our life to please the Lord. Uh, just now I got tuned up spiritually back there in the prayer room. I heard uh, a lot of prayers going up to God. But it wasn't until I heard a teenage boy lift his voice like a trumpet in there with all of us men gathered. And it woke us up. It really put the stress and the accent mark and the, the point uh, on the hour that we're living in in this day. That is that we need to keep ourselves faithful. Why? Why? Because there is, uh, there's a verdict. The verdict is there's lost souls out there. Uh, the, 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 the summation of it all, if we could say it tonight, church, we need to be faithful. Why? Because there's a lost and dying world going to a devil's head. If they're looking at our life as an example, what do they have to you? What do they see in us? Some may say, well, pastor, uh, I'm just as good as the folks down there at the church. And they might be true. They might be right. Amen. Wouldn't it be an awful thing as you know, I've heard said that uh, lost people can mimic and copy about 90% of what we do down here. So it doesn't take spiritual people to have a schedule in the service to uh, to sing songs. Uh, did you know the satanic churches have songs to their master? What's going on? I'm saying it's a trend. And, of course, it's coming from California. You good people from California, y'all love me. I know you do. But you know what? God is worthy of Satan. Uh, if he's being worshipped, I think that God is worthy of us being faithful to him. Amen. Amen. I believe that our God is worthy of us following his word. God loves a humble and a servant heart, contrite heart. He's worthy of us giving service and rendering our love and uh, devotions to him. Now, many people, they want recognition when they serve the Lord. That's not service rendered with a humble heart. Amen. Service rendered with a humble heart doesn't seek after recognition, but they just want to be faithful to the Lord. Amen. You understand how that is? And so all of the results, we don't uh, so much count the numbers of results. We're more interested in being faithful to the Lord. Paul planted, Apollos watered, but it was who that gave the increase? God, who 
gives the increase. And so just be faithful to God. So many people are afraid that if they are taking part in church or in the service of the Lord, that somehow they're going to set Christianity back. May I just clue you in? You're not going to set Christianity back in Gulfport, Mississippi, not even one inch. Come on and jump on in. Amen. Amen. And we need helpers, we need laborers, we need workers. But let me just remind you, in the process of all of this, please, please, please be faithful to God. Amen. Your daily walk with God. I'm talking about your communication with the Holy Father. I'm talking about your daily prayer time, your devotions to our God. This is first and foremost. This is what fuels all the service rendered unto our God. You know, if you get the work before the worship, there, <laughs> there's not going to be a whole lot of work. You'll do it in arm of the flesh, and pretty soon you'll, you know, you'll fall out. Well, there's too many fallouts. There's too many statistics. There's too many people who are castaways. And Paul the Apostle made it very clear. Uh, if you'll go with me to 1 Corinthians, please. Chapter 9. Is it all right? Impromptu, God gave me a verse. Yeah. The Bible says in verse 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 27. Here the Apostle Paul, the great Christian now, he is very, very much uh, in tune to God. But he also knows that his flesh is also weak. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. He says it best when he says, I keep under my body. Whoop! In other words, he's, uh, he's washing himself. He's keeping himself in check. Do you have to do that? Of course, you're living in this sinful flesh. Our new man is pretty good. You, know, you notice how good our new man is? We clean him up pretty good. And he, he, he does real good when he's, when he's connected to the Lord. Let me just say this about all of our old man that lives within us. All of us have the old nature. He's right. Amen. He don't like to do right. He don't like to pray. He don't like to come to church. That's why people are so unfaithful. You know why? They're not putting down and putting out the old man. And they're living to him instead of living to the new man. But he said, I keep my body and bring it under subjection. In other words, the spirit is ruling the body, not the body ruling the spirit. He says, I, I bring it under subjection less than that by any means when I preach to others that I myself should be, what? A castaway. In our everyday vernacular, a crackpot. There's a lot of those. Amen. And drugs are running rampant. I mean, we're laughing here tonight, but I'm telling you, if we had a hold of the drug uh, cartel and the drug movement of uh, illicit drugs uh, across our county lines here, uh, friend, we would have a brand new community. I said if we could put a, a hold on all this. How much more then should we as God's people, who are the remnant, who is chosen? Somebody help me out of here. I feel like I'm all alone tonight. How much more then should we be faithful? Uh, it, it, what happens if the church gets unfaithful? What happens if the good Christians down at the church get unfaithful? Well, this whole sinful world could take completely over. Amen. I mean, I mean over. And I think they're halfway accomplishing that tonight. Number one, faithfulness. You need to be faithful in your prayer life. Let's notice verses four and verse number five. For in every, every creature of God is good. Somebody praise God and put a little deer out in your asterisk in your sideline right there. Nothing to be refused. Backstrap. Amen. Back quarters. Amen. Right there. Help me, please. If, now don't see, if it be received with biscuits and gravy. Is that in your version? Received with thanksgiving. And it is sanctified by the word of God. And notice this. How everything is sanctified. Through prayer. No doubt that Paul is finding these Judaizers that are wanting these young Christians to go back under the law. They're one not wanting them to eat certain things uh, that uh, uh, Moses uh, despised. And he said you cannot eat. And, but isn't it amazing, praise the Lord, that Paul comes back now and he says, You know what, folks? Jesus nailed all those things to the cross. He says, if we'll pray over this and we'll uh, receive it with thanksgiving and prayer, it's been sanctified. Amen. Oh, praise God for that. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about through prayer, our impure doctrine can be made sanctified when we pray. And then when we eat, have you ever thought of this? 
Every creature of God can be sanctified through prayer. Have you ever thought about this? Maybe a lot of our sicknesses would not materialize if we really prayed before our meal. You don't know what you're getting nowadays. I think the whole world's gone crazy. And they're just feeding us things that are not good for our body, nitrates, all kinds of things. I pray all the time, dear God, eliminate fat grams. <laughs> Make me skinny. Amen. Again. I'm telling you, when me and this train uh, started seeing each other, 16 and 17, help me, Jesus. 28 waistline. Since I married her, none of your business waistline. <laughs> Praise God. So, have you thought about this? Maybe weaker doctrine would not creep into the church if we would pray more and let God lead those who he would into the church. He knows their motives. He knows if they're up to good or if they're up to bad. We do not know. We're vulnerable. We're weak. But let me tell you when we get smarter and wiser about some of these people who creep in. Amen creeps yeah. through prayer through prayer God sanctifies his church and he cleanses and purges his church Amen. it could it be said that the bodily exercise that we do would be multiplied for the needs of our physical condition the Bible here brings us out that bodily exercise profiteth it does profit but notice little in comparison to that which is godly. Godly, of course, is priority. Godly is more important. Reading your verses in the Bible is more important than the workout gym. Uh, talking to God is more important than making sure you run however many miles in the morning. I'm all for getting into shape, and I'm all for looking lean and trim, lean, mean, fight machine. I'm all for that. But don't forget as you go through life's uh, day, don't forget to get in touch with your maker. I think he could make all these other things. Seek you first the kingdom of God has been our prayer and our verse for so many years. I think he could make life a whole lot easier to lose weight, to get in shape, and everything if we connect to God in the spirit. Amen. Spirit of God. Here's a man that owned a gym back here. Amen to me tonight. He knows what I'm talking about. If you have the spirit of God, uh, we can do all things through Christ our Savior. He's the Savior, not just of our soul, of our body, of our mind. We're going to be one in Christ one day. We're going to look like him, talk like him. And, and let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, Philippians 2 and verse number 5. But we understand in verse number 7, we see that there, we're to pro, uh, refuse these profane and old wise fables and exercise ourselves rather unto God. If I notice this about having faith. The more faith a person has, the less superstitions they have. And the less faith that a person has, uh, the more wise fables and tales and superstitions and all that hocus pocus stuff they believe. Gene Dixon's and psychic hotlines and reading tarot cards and, and palm reading and all that nonsense. Those people are lacking a whole lot of faith. I'm not saying they're not saved. They just need a closer walk with the Lord. It's okay if I preach tonight. So we need faithfulness in prayer. Prayer will eliminate all the need for that. Ask Saul when you get to heaven. If you wish he didn't go to the witch of Endor, I know what his answer is ahead of time. I think he left out here early because he, he wanted to, she told him what he wanted to hear, but it wasn't what he wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go to the internet and find out, Google this, Google that. Google, what about this? What about that? What about the other? Why don't you spend as much talking to God as you do to the Google man, whoever he is. Amen. He might be the booger man. You better watch that. Right. Faithfulness in prayer tonight. I will say verses 8 through 9. We need faithfulness in these faithful sayings of the Lord. You know, there's several times in the Bible we're on one tonight. Uh, this is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation. What is this faithful saying? We have to look back to the previous verse. Having promise of the life that now is. That's the physical life. That's the abundant life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Comma. And of that which is to come. Let's not forget the hereafter. Let's not forget eternal life is coming. 
Let's not forget there's joy unspeakable and full of glory where he's at. Let's not forget that in his presence there's what? Continual joy, Psalm number 16. So what am I saying? I'm saying that these godliness profit in all things. And here is a promise of life. This is a promise of eternal life, thank God. And this is a faithful saying. And the scripture here makes it very clear that we're good ministers if we keep those that we preach to in memory of all these things that are here present and those things that are here to come. I keep that before you all the time that this there's a better day coming. Praise the Lord. These are faithful sayings. Amen. Oh, listen, and, and, and uh, 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 hey, don't you get on to me for looking heavenward. Don't you get on to me uh, for uh, uh, looking past this old sinful world. Hey, that's what we're supposed to be setting our affections on those things. Amen. Because if we put our affections and love on the things of this world, no wonder people are so depressed. No wonder some people are so, uh, you know, just uh, uh, completely, uh, uh, they have no meaning. They're, they, they have no, uh, there's no reality in their life, simply put, because they're not trusting in eternal things. They're trusting in these temporal things, and these temporal things will let you down. Yeah, right. Big time. Amen. Have y'all ever been there and got the t-shirt and, and, and the ball cap? What did your ball cap say? Make America great again? Anyway. Yeah, that's all right too, isn't it? Hey, but if God feeds the birds, does he not feed the birds? I thought about this. You sit down on that deer stand long enough, you'll, you'll catch some of this. He don't just feed the birds, he feeds all the animals. By the way, there's 8 billion of us animals. He don't have a problem feeding all of us. Praise the Lord. That's the question in here. Anybody gone hungry lately? You can look at me and tell I haven't gone hungry lately. But look, God, if he does all these things, if he looks after us, if he takes care of us here in this world, don't you think he can take care of us in the world to come? Surely he can. I mean, especially for those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, didn't the Lord say, they shall be filled? Yeah. I believe they'll be satisfied. Maybe you're hungry for the wrong thing. Maybe this whole sinful world is not satisfying. You cannot say it won't. The way of the transgressor is hard. You have a hard time? Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Amen? Hey, we want you as God's people to overcome and, and to be overcoming Christians. We must be eagle Christians. Hello. You, you must be renewed in the new man day by day, the scripture says. I'm talking about the hidden man of the heart is the one that needs to control the body. What's happening is our body and our mind is controlling what our spirit life uh, should do and the, the spirit should be the one telling our body and our mind what we should do. We've got just the opposite. So you need to feed the spirit man in you that the outer man will never go. I promise you, if you're feeding your spirit man, you'll never go hungry. You feed the spiritual man, praise the Lord, everybody around you, We'll never go hungry. Why? Because the scriptures make it very clear here. They were a little bit concerned about what people were eating outwardly. What they should have been more concerned about as to what we were feeding our soul. Amen. Amen. Scripture here does say something for you who are concerned about uh, what you're eating. And I, that's a good thought. That's a good idea. Not near as good as what your diet is spiritually, however. I just keep hitting that point. Is that all right with everybody? That's not condoning overeating. I'm not talking about gorging yourself. Colossians 2, verse number 16. Here it is. Let no man judge you in meat or drink or respect of holy day or new moon or Sabbath day. Uh, mind your own big business. We'd say beeswax back when I was young. Amen? If I want to get a Christmas ham out, two or three of them. Amen? Hallelujah. But barbecue sauce on whatever I want to do. Amen. God's in control. I'm praying over all this good stuff. I tell you, I come home from uh, church today. My wife had a crock pot. It was so good. It was, it was ready when we got home. I loved every minute of it. You know what? More that she made it than what it was. You know, I've never tasted anything that my dear wife has made that wasn't good. You know why? I think it's love between us. 
I think I would love it if it was the worst thing that I could possibly, <laughs> that would not be palatable to my taste. <laughs> I'd get it down somehow. <laughs> Let me just say this for good measure for humor tonight, and it is absolutely true. I was served a whole bowl in Romania. This was a delicacy. This was something very, very good to eat. This was something that only those of very high uh, standing would be eating with these colonels and commandants of these prisons that we used to go into. They came up one day and they had a man with white gloves on. He came out there with a silver tray and they brought it before us. The two or three of them brought it out and sit right there in front of me and just wanted to see my expression. They just wanted to please me as a new man, uh, new kid on the block. And the whole bowl of beef brains. I thought, dear God, I've got to get this down. Help me, Jesus. I did some high prayer. Remember, it's all sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Amen. I'll say thirdly and lastly. Go on and get me some Cheetos or something after that. I might lose it up here tonight. Faithfulness in suffering, reproach, and uh, the persecution that does come. Listen, if you're faithful to God, look for it. You know what the Lord says, though, when we are suffering? And, I, and no one here, really, on this earth at this present time, maybe some folks overseas, uh, they're, they're being persecuted over there. But truly, you know what we're to do if we are persecuted for the cause in the name of Christ? Scripture says, happy are we. Amen. Oh, yes. Listen to Acts 5, verse 41. They departed from the presence of the council rejoicing, that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Yeah. You see the difference? Now, we could say, hey, we're suffering for Jesus and all that, and, and really getting upset, and get church hurt, and get bitter, and get out of church, and, and oh, my, 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 we'd never hear the end of it. They'd milk that as long as they could milk it. Yes. But the Apostle Paul said he thought it, he was kind of worthy. Amen. He was so thankful that he was kind of worthy to suffer shame. I think it was uh, John and Peter there uh, that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for the name of Christ. These people were being beaten. Yeah. These people were being imprisoned. These people were being talked about relentlessly, you see. They warned them. They said, you cannot preach in this name of Jesus ever again. You know what happened when they got out of jail, don't you? They went right back to preaching Amen. Jesus Christ. See, how do you know the resurrection was accurate? How do you know it ever happened? I can tell you I know for certain that it happened. Because all of those disciples who saw the resurrected Lord, you could not shut them up. Amen. You could imprison, you could beat them, you could whip them with a cat of nine tails. It did not matter. Hey, when you are going through suffering, if it ever comes your way, and I believe it will, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to just dive into the book of First and Second Peter, finding out when these sufferings come, and they will. I think the apostles and few other exceptions nowadays are able to give us an example of suffering. But when, if they do come into your life, and they will, suffering for Christ now. Suffer because we're in a warfare. Suffer because the devil hates you and me. Suffer because he killed all of us before we got out of bed in the morning if it weren't for the good Lord being on our team. Amen. Amen. When these things come about, read some of the Bible books in the Bible like Job. Find yourself in there. Put your nose in there and feel what he felt. Rejoice that you're kind of worthy suffer the reproach of our Savior. Go to, go to the book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 15, chapter number 16. He said, if they hate me, they'll hate you. Amen. If they persecute me, they'll persecute you. And in chapter number 16, it tells us who it is that's doing the persecution. Let's turn over there, please. 
Another impromptu. Is it all right? Chapter number 16, please. These things that I have spoken unto you, that uh, you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yes. They shall vote you out as pastor. <laughs> Didn't hear anything there. <laughs> Crane version. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. That day's coming. Don't think it's going to get any better. Hey, if you're one of these, uh, uh, you know, name it, claim it kind of fellows, and if you have faith, you're going to be riding in a Rolls Royce and all that, just read through here a little bit. Jesus said, if they uh, persecute me, they're going to persecute you. He said, is a servant greater than his Lord? They hung Jesus on a cross. It says that whosoever killeth you will think that God, that he doeth God's service. Now these things will they do unto you. Now they, underline that please. The word T-H-E-Y. Who are they? These things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father. Yes. Nor me. Yes. The people who are persecuting Christians, help me Jesus, I'm going to say it. They ain't Christians. They're lost people. They need Jesus. Christians don't persecute and cause suffering and harm and hardship to another Christian. No. They're encouraging or should. And if you can't say anything good, please don't say anything bad. Didn't mama teach us that growing up? She said, just don't say anything, son, if you can't say anything good. My goodness. Why is it then that we do suffer? I believe this. I believe God allows his children to suffer. One reason. To put those that are persecuting under conviction. Isn't that what happened to the Apostle Paul? The very acts, the very action, the very things that he was committing unto those people. who He was hailing these people into prison. Giving consent unto their death. Holding the very coats that these martyrs were wearing. And when Stephen all said, Lord, lay not the sin of their charge. Bro, that put him under conviction. Because he gave consent for this man to die, and he had the love of Christ in him, and he didn't hate back. When people hate you, don't hate back. When people say all manner of evil against you falsely for the name of Christ, just rejoice and be exceeding glad. Great is your reward in heaven, is what my Bible said. So why is it that we suffer? Well, maybe the Lord's testing us to see who we really trust. Have you thought about it? Some trust Wall Street. Some can't live out a whole hour without looking and seeing what Wall Street's doing. I felt it get real quiet in here. Amen. Uh, some are watching NASDAQ, whatever that is. Some are watching Golden Sachs. Hello. Amen. Some are looking at Mr. Morgan Stanley up there. Hey, but who are you trusting in? These things, look, they're up and down, they're volatile. Stocks, bonds, treasure bills, all those things. The things of this world, listen, will grow strange with him in the light of his glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, Brother Richard sings it for us every week. You know, I really not ever had to worry about the monetary. Y'all forgive me. I don't chase after a dollar. Nobody in this church will ever be able to put that and point that at me. I trusted the Lord and I surrendered my life to the Lord. Guess what? He comes looking for me. I don't go looking for him. The blessings come. Yeah. We're talking about faithfulness tonight. Let's go over to the book of Mark, please. Mark chapter number 10. You still with me? Yeah. Have you gone to sleep out there on me tonight? Wake up. Wake up, Christian. That's, that's preacher's job, isn't it? Wake you up. Mark chapter 10, verse number 30. Look at it with me, please. I'm in Matthew. Go and pray for me. I love you. Mark 10, verse number 30. But he shall receive. Now notice this. Let's go back to verse 29. Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or brother and sisters or father, mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my sake and the gospels. Okay. But if he does, hold on to your hat. Hold on to your horses. You see, we don't 
get by getting. We get by giving. If you give your life to Christ and you sell out and you become faithful to him, he's promised that you will receive a hundredfold now this time. Is that what your Bible says? What are you afraid of? What are you worried over? You worried about paying the bills? Sell out to God. Amen. Houses? Looks pretty tempting. Brethren? Need some fellowship? Sisters? How about this? You lost your mother, you need one? They're available. And children? Anybody need kids? And lands? Somebody want to get rid of some? Did I hear some? Somebody's offering their children. <laughs> hey, don't forget this next little part here. Hey, would you put up parentheses around this? With persecutions. Woo! God starts blessing you. You, you think you've had it hard. The great test is not when you're down. The great test is when you're up. The great test is after the blessing, see what you'll do with it. See if you'll be a good steward. See if you'll be faithful. The great test is after the persecution comes because it's coming. When God blesses you, people are going to start their mouths with water. They're going to start their mouths talking. It's human nature. I don't hold it against sin. It's just human nature. And notice what it says. Are y'all still there? Amen. Oh, but look here. Don't, don't think about this old sinful world because they'll drag you through the mud holes. Notice this. And in the world come. Yes. This is the part I want to talk about and think about eternal life. Whoa! Mm -hmm. So out to God, amen. amen. Many that are first shall be last, and the last first. You know why many won't ever identify or even come close to identifying with this church or another true church of the Lord Jesus Christ? Let me tell you why. They don't want to suffer the reproach of Jesus Christ. They don't want to come here because they know they're going to be talked about, ridiculed, and run down. That's the true church. That's the true test. Amen? Yeah. I sure wouldn't want to go to the church that has placed persecution and suffering on the heads of the true Christians. They're out there. See me after the service if you need an explanation on that. Amen? I'm just saying... Pray for these situations in the sinful world. Why? Because we need to pray for them. Even those that have been deceived. The Bible says here God is the Savior of all men. God can and will save them. Only if we have faith believing that God can and will. Do you believe that this morning? Yeah. Now you have to believe. And I was saved. Did I say last week while I go out loud? I'm sorry. Faithfulness after you suffer. Verse 12. Of our text tonight. Faithfulness after that we are suffering. Let's look at it in light of the scripture now. Do you love the Bible? Amen. Boy, look, uh, God, He's got all the answers. We've got all the questions, don't we? Now we're in First Timothy. I'm over here in Second Timothy. I'm running all over the Bible tonight. Let, let's see it now. At verse number twelve. Let no man despise you, your youth. Hey, can I just say this? The Bible also says in other places, "Let no man despise you." You don't have to run, you don't have you don't have to let people run over you. You don't have to be mean back, but you don't have to let them use you as a doormat. Amen. And some people will. They just love it because you you're supposed to be a Christian, you're supposed to take it. Oh really? Well, I might not be spiritual on that day to turn my other cheek. Amen. Don't try my and test my integrity. <laughs> but be thou an example. Gnosis of the believers. Are you being faithful after you suffer? I'm talking about uh, after you have suffered a while. The Bible says this will settle you. This will make you the kind of Christian that you should be. Why is it we have to suffer, preacher? Because you need settling down. You might be too high and mighty. Did you know that Paul had to have a thorn in the flesh because he'd seen the third heaven and the scripture says that a messenger of Satan came to buffet him lest he be exalted above measure. Lest he get too puffed up in pride. One of these things have to come in my life, man, maybe because we've got too much pride in our heart. Amen. Again, a warning to those who've been blessed, be careful. Lest we be puffed up and pride come in our heart. Amen? You understand where I'm going with this tonight? 
And so after that we suffer, you need to be faithful. Why? Because we do, do not need to allow, we need to meditate on the word God day and night. And we do not need to allow Satan to hinder our ministry to other people. That's what it's all about. He wants us to stop. He wants us to quit. He doesn't want us to preach anymore. He wants uh, people to meddle with our preaching. Hey, listen, my preaching, it, it's not for you to meddle with. God is the judge. Amen? Amen. If you don't like it, just take it up with him. There's, there's a hundred other Baptist churches in the county. We are not to hurt or despise anyone. We're to be good to all men. And to pray for even the kings and all men. But the scripture says, but especially to those who are of the what? Household of faith. Those are the household of faith. We're to pray for these that are in the world. Sure, but we're to be faithful after we suffer. We're to be faithful to those elders who've lived before us. They've gone down the same road we've been on and are on presently. They suffer longer and harder than we have suffered. We need to pray for those elders in the church. We need to go by and visit them. We need to go to these convalescent homes. I said we need to go to these jail houses and visit these people that have fought, kept, found themselves in a terrible mess. Don't think it can't happen to you. I lost your attention on that. Say, so what would I want to go over there and talk to those people for? Because it might remind you you're just as weak as they are. But the grace of God, so do I. Amen. Can I tell you that we've been to the jailhouse twice this week and each time we found good, solid Christians that just needed some comfort. Yeah. They needed encouragement. And given the same opportunity and the same temptation, we may not have did as good as they did. Might have been worse. How'd you like to shame your testimony, your family's testimony, your church's testimony? But pray, God, that we don't ever shame the testimony of our Lord. We're to be an example in word. That's what you say. In conversation, that's conduct. In charity, that's love. Godly love. In spirit. Oh, listen. Oh, listen. In your spirit. Your doctrine may be pure, but your spirit may be wrong. You could be sitting right up on top of right, and your spirit be wrong. You're wrong. Amen. We need to keep our spirit in check. Amen. Uh, why is it that you're looking so sad? Your countenance needs to look good. You need to smile a little while. Tell your face you love Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hey, it says in faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Am I right? In purity, that's holy living. That's separating the lifestyle unto the Lord. Then it says give attention to reading, exhortation. This is preaching, of course. You know what? I think we spend way too much time watching the television when we ought to be watching uh, good preachers, favorite preachers that we love. I could just watch your brother Justin Cooper. I could watch him all day long, every day. I just love hearing the man preach. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to be having another revival. Is that all right with everybody? Yeah. The Bible says stir up the gift. We're going to look in March. Brother John Shook's coming all the way from North Carolina. Amen. He's been here before. I just love hearing the man preach. He's like a band of rooster running all up and down the state, all over the aisles. That, that's the kind of preaching. I, I like all kind of preaching. I like all kind of delivery. That is, if they're preaching out of the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so the Bible says, give attention to reading and to preaching and exhortation. Do you listen to preaching outside the preaching time? So I, I got enough when I was at the church. Maybe that's what's missing. Amen. Amen. Give attention to read. Do you read? Start out with the Bible. Do you read the Bible? Amen. How about the good, solid books that, that are read, uh, that, are, that are being uh, written, uh, biblical books that you can read? We're starting up our institute, and this will be this next Tuesday night. Oh, think about missions and worldwide evangelism and life of Christ. Man, good night. Hey, then it says, neglect not the gift that is in thee. This is the Holy Spirit. It was given thee a prophecy the laying on of hands of the presbytery. The night I was ordained, the men gathered around me. There was about 12 of them or so. They laid hands on me that night. I could feel the pulse of those men and the heat of their heat of their voices as they were whispering the prayers in my ear. And I cried that night uncontrollably. The Spirit of God was surging in my body. And can I just say this? 
Every time that those men pray over me on the stage every Sunday, it happens to me over again. I pray that I will never lose my tears because tears are a language God understands. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. That's what's wrong with modern church. There's no more tears. There'll be no more reaping until there's some more weeping. Amen. We're to water the seed of the word of God that we plant in the hearts of those that we preach to with tears. Praise the Lord. Amen. Meditate, says, on these things. Do you have time to meditate? I meditate out in the woods. I go out in the woods. Is that all right? Yeah. Give thyself wholly. That's W-H-O-L-L-Y. I'm talking about to prayer, to reading, uh, to exhortation or preaching. The Bible says to young Timothy, the young preacher, give yourself totally over these things. Your walk with God, it doesn't matter. Praying, studying, meditating. Why? That our faithfulness may appear to all. I hope you can say about your pastor, I've been a faithful servant of the Lord. I hope at the end of the day, the Lord Jesus can say, well done, thou good. And I, what? Faithful servant. Faithful servant. Hey, take heed to thyself and the doctrine. How important is the doctrine? How important is doctrine in the church? Some churches say they don't have doctrine. Well, they have. It's just weak and puny. Amen? John 3, 16, we like to quote here in our church. Will save every soul who believes. I believe that. It has the power to save every soul. One verse. Yes. I said one verse right in the final of your Bible. Here's what I also believe, comma. It has the power to purify all doctrinal indiscretions, all doctrinal impurities. For God so loved the world. Yes. Makes it pretty clear, doesn't it? Yes. Hey, what's the limited grace people going to say about that? For God so loved the world that he gave. First missionary. Amen. He was once sent by God. He gave his only begotten son. Right. The greatest gift of all. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever. That's anybody in time anywhere. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Shall we say. Yes. Oh praise God for that. Amen. What? What a statement. Be faithful Christian. You know God's faithful to us. We'll never be able to point our finger and say God hasn't been faithful. I'll tell you who, if anybody's unfaithful, let me tell you who it is. It's not God. I love singing that song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Christian, be faithful. Your church attendance, your soul winning, your reading, your praying, your meditating. Just be a dedicated Christian. Not long ago, we had a funeral. There was a young choir that came in front of the stage here, and they marched out here. They looked so. Uh, organized as they were. They practiced this, you could tell. They came in here and they practiced it a couple times before all the people arrived. They were they, they were the best I ever heard. They had everyone's attention. They sang two songs in Latin. Practice up on our book in our language skills. I don't know what they were saying, but boy, I was getting blessed. Amen. I felt like I was in the heaven and somewhere between here and, and the third heaven. And then they sang a song. Someone help me. The last one they sang. Nearer my God to thee. Was it nearer my God to thee? So. Okay. I believe it because she said it. I don't think it's the one that I believe. <laughs> I tell you, by the time they got through with that song, you know what? I was glad. Amen. Scripture says, uh, over there in Psalms, it said, uh, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. You know, when you've been in the presence of the Lord, there's no doubt He's there. There's no doubt He spoke tonight. There's no doubt He has something for you to do and you haven't been exactly as faithful as you should be and you're going to miss tomorrow and the blessings going to come your way and you're not going to be prepared and so many people running here, running there, going here, going there, trying to go here, trying to do this and forgetting about their commitment to the Lord that made so many years ago. Amen. Folks, let's get back to basics. The nice message with just simple, basic things that every Christian ought to be doing. But why is it we neglect to do the things that we know we should be doing? Every Christian knows what a Christian should be. Let's bow our heads and ask the Lord to help us. Father in heaven, we're so thankful.